Now I'm back in the present, and it's completely shrouded in darkness. I can't see it, but I can feel the tension in the air. It's a state of emergency. And that's only natural. With a power failure, all of the cell bars opened automatically. Plus, now a death row inmate is loose in the darkness. I did what I promised Lynn. I stopped the execution. But that condemned criminal is now in just as much danger as before. Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd the Shore. I talk about roleplay games and today we're going to be playing Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we stopped Detective Jowd from being executed. And in this episode, we're going to go ahead and see if we can get him out of prison. The darkness is thick, but it can also be our friend. Right now, it's what Detective Jowd is hiding himself in. I hope the detective is alright in this blackness. I better find him fast. Come to think of it, he gave me some advice. Head for the spoon, he said. I wonder what that was all about. It's weird that Sissel doesn't know what Jowd is talking about when he says head for the spoon when we literally just dealt with a spoon like five minutes ago. The detective told me to head for the spoon when I got back to the present. So here I am. Bell, I better go back. I don't know what voice to give him. Whew, I'm back. Thank goodness someone flushed his toilet. That was good timing. Now to use the cover of darkness to help the detective escape. But first, I have to find him. It's prisoner C-74! Secure the prisoner! Hmm. It looks like there are hunters in this darkness. I hope they haven't found Detective Jowd. This, I will say, is probably my favorite chapter in the game, right next to the last couple of chapters. This is some true darkness. But luckily, darkness doesn't exist in the ghost world. I can make use of that fact to help me find the detective. So if we move on over to Jowd's cell... Huh? What's that red light? Hmm, it looks like the hunter's eye is glowing red. Doesn't look like escape is going to be easy. Hey there, Jowd. Oh, there you are. I was wondering what I was going to do. Are you the one who made that toilet bell ring? That's right. I still had another napkin lying around. Thanks to that, I managed to make it here. But how did you know to do that? I learned a few things about your ghost tricks during our time together. They certainly can be very useful powers, but at times not so much. I knew that if the internal phones weren't working, you'd be trapped in the death chamber area. So I quickly came up with an alternative route. A route that made use of sausage head spoon in my napkin. Wow, this detective is good. Next time you praise me, go ahead and say it out loud. Anyway, it looks like it's time for a strategy meeting. An escape strategy, huh? This could be interesting. Let's do this. So, let's make sure we're both clear. The key to my escape is this darkness. Once the basement power supply is restored, escape will be impossible. So we move under the cover of darkness, huh? I know I won't have much trouble with that. But I'm afraid I won't be able to see, so you'll have to lead the way. Lead the way? Once you find a safe spot for me to move to, I want you to give me a signal. Okay, fine, but how? The dead don't have voices. Even if they did, we have to be quiet. Don't you worry about that. I have an idea. Let's just try it and you'll see how it works. 
This detective likes to just dive right into things, even more than Lynn does. If they find me, I imagine they'll shoot first and ask questions later. But if I die again, we can just start over, right? He says cheerfully. I don't know if you know it or not, but this is a special prison. There aren't any dangerous criminals here, except for me, that is. Yes, I did hear something about it being a special place. Yes, and because of the special status, they're not prepared at all for emergencies. They have four timid security guards at most. I think I saw some hunters looking in the darkness, though. Those are the guards. They're wearing night vision goggles. Night vision goggles? They're special glasses that let you see in the dark. Very handy things. If I enter their field of vision, it's all over. So it's all about staying out of the guard's line of sight, eh? Make sure you guide me to safe spots. So yeah, it's time to bust Jowd out of prison. Now, about that signal I want you to give me. Oh yeah, how am I supposed to do it? I've already been dead once. I don't know if it's because of that or what, but I can sense your powers now. Y you what? For example, you're in the bunk right now, aren't you? Wow, I'm impressed. I guess you have a sixth sense. I think it's more like a detective sense. Uh, that doesn't sound right somehow. Anyway, the details don't matter. Do you see this Jowd icon here? Yeah, where did that come from? Let's use it as our signal. How will that work? If you touch the Jowd icon, I'll sense it. Then I'll move to where you are. So for example... If you move to that spoon and touch the Jowd icon, I'll run to the spoon. Simple, right? Alright, fine. Let's start our escape plan. Just make sure you guide me to safe spots, Sissel. Okay, so that red light. That's the light of the night vision goggles on one of the guards. I can use the light to let me know where the guard is. And if you watch the light closely, you can tell how the guard is moving, too. Very informative in this darkness. Keep a sharp eye out for it. <laughs> Alright, so a bit of behind-the-scenes stuff here. This section only takes you, if you know what you're doing, around four minutes, maybe even three minutes, because there were some parts here where I waited quite a while and kind of forgot what I was doing there. This should only take you like three or four minutes if you know what you're doing here, but I guess I wrote some stuff wrong down in my notes, and so this entire section took me half an hour. And these videos are all already getting quite long with their 30-minute run times, because uh, there's some some videos are even like there's one video back then that was like 50 minutes, and so I feel like videos that are long like these don't really need extra padding or fluff. I don't feel like any of my videos need any extra padding or fluff, but especially not these ones, and especially when that padding is 30 minutes worth of just me failing over and over again. So yeah, this chapter is something that I remember fond- I remember fondly, or I remembered fondly before going into this, and then I played through this and it was just kind of like, Oh, this is not as fun as I remember it being. Uh, and it seems like a lot of people agree with me online. There are a few people who really do enjoy this section. Um, and maybe it's just a skill issue. I know that's a popular meme right now, but maybe it's just an issue that I have with kind of not being the best at games. Uh, but this whole section was just kind of annoying for me. So, there are a few extra minutes until this chapter ends. If you're using this video as a guide, go ahead and just follow along with what I'm doing in the video. But, basically, I'll just, I just want to talk about how this game is getting a remaster. I believe that's cor the correct term. Uh, this June, I believe it is. 
and I am super excited for that. If you are watching this and you are interested in this game at all, please go pick that up. I forget what the price is or even if they have revealed the price yet, but I promise you it's worth it, whatever it is, because uh, this is genuinely probably in my top 10, maybe even top 5, maybe even top 3 favorite video games of all time, because this game is just awesome. Uh, and I'm hoping if they... Uh, one interesting thing that I was thinking about, but I don't know if I necessarily do want this, is that, you know, this game is awesome, and of course with every game that's awesome, uh, people naturally want a sequel. And so I would like that, but only if the creator, Shu Takumi, uh, is, like, really wants to do it. Because Shu Takumi, of course, wrote the Ace Attorney series, uh, one of my favorite game series of all times. And he originally just wanted to stop after Ace Attorney 3, but they forced him into doing Ace Attorney 4, and my opinion of that game is quite low, and I know a lot of people on the internet share the same opinion. Uh, and then, you know, they just, you know, let him go. They uh, kicked him off the writing staff, or I guess he just didn't really, really, really didn't want to do another Ace Attorney game after that. But then once he became passionate about writing for the series again, he made the Great Ace Attorney duology, uh, which I haven't beaten myself, but I hear from some that they're some of the best games in the series. And so moral of the story is, my point is, he, sh he should make a sequel only if he really, really wants to. Because it's been shown in the past that if he's real, really passionate about making a sequel for a series, then it'll be uh, really good, but if he's not really passionate, it'll be quite bad, and I don't know if I want a bad Ghost Trick sequel. Well, obviously no, I don't want a, ghost trick, a bad Ghost Trick sequel. But yeah, that's about it. So, what do you think? I'd say if we've come this far, we did great. We did it. Great job, Sissel. The basement generator has been repaired, restoring power to all areas. We made it. But the question is, what now? I don't have anywhere to go, do I? Maybe I'll go back to my cell. You'd better be kidding. I am not doing that again. But I'm still a condemned criminal, you know. I doubt anybody to welcome me with open arms. Why don't you try contacting Lynn? She went to see some justice minister guy. So, an escaped death row convict is supposed to just report in to the Justice Minister. Is that it? Hmm. I kind of like that. Anyway, after all the trouble you went through, I guess I'd better run. That would be nice, yes. Alright, Sissel. Until we meet again. So now I've saved a condemned criminal's life and helped him escape. Was that really the right thing to do? I guess all I can do is believe in, in Lynn at this point. Detective Jowd was painting my picture in his cell. He knows me. I'm sure I'll be talking to him again. Alrighty, so now that we're done with that, which I'm sure I've edited it down a ton, so that was only like a, couple, a few minutes for you guys, but that was like... Took half an hour for me to figure out. I'm, I'm I'm sad to say because I didn't write it down properly in my notes, uh, like how to exactly get out of there. Uh, so now nothing left but an empty cell. No sense in staying here. I might as well go back. Back upstairs using the internal phone. Indeed, we shall. Let's head over to the guard room. That's what it's called, not Bailey's room. 
It's the room with Bailey in it, so that's why I called it that earlier. But Detective Jowd's Until We Meet Again came around quicker than I expected. When I got back to the guard room, the next fateful call came in. Hello, this is... Sissel, are you there? Uh, hello? Who is this? Oh, I'm not talking to you, officer. Anyway, if you're there, Sissel, come here immediately. I'll be waiting for you. If you make it in time, that is. Hey, wait a minute. Trace complete. That call! Who was it from? I don't know. Some weird call. Ah, but who will call an end to my dancing? Yeah, well, once you get going like that, I'm not going to stop you. It's a contest, then. Which will stop first, my dancing or the turning of the planet? Yeah, good luck with that. KMR 3243. On the other end of the telephone line, the scene that greets me tells me one simple fact. That our great escape plan has ended in failure. Never expected to see you here, Inspector Cabanella. I believe that's my line, old friend. What were you doing here? I believe that's my line too, clearly. I came to attend to your execution. They told me what time it was. Couldn't get in the chamber, so I was observing a moment of silence here. And when I looked up, my eyes full of tears. There you were, baby. It's just the way things turned out. I took part in what seemed like a fun game, and here I am. Here's what I wish, my old friend. Wish it was anybody but me who found you here. Because now that I found you, man, I have to turn you in. You have to stay spotlessly clean after all. Thanks for coming. I wanted to say goodbye to you. As you can see, I guess I'm not going to be much help to you. What's going to happen to you? Being executed tonight is just about the only thing on my schedule, it seems. Executed, huh? Death is pretty much meaningless to me. Anyway, I guess we'll be seeing each other again. By the way, there's something I'm looking for. Oh, that's right. Your lost memory. You know things I'd like to know. Would you mind if I asked you a few questions? In return for tonight's fun little game, is that it? I saw it, you know. That picture you were painting in your cell tonight. That was me. Which means you must know me. I'm very sorry, but... I can't talk to you about that now. What? Why not? Because I... I don't know your true face. My... True face? I'm a detective. I can only talk about what I'm sure of. However, I can give you one lead at least. A lead? What is it? Long time ago, I gave Lynn something to hold on to for me. It was a music box. If you ever come across it, I advise you to open it. It might jog your memory. That wooden box I found in Lynn's apartment. And that's the only help I can give you right now. That man pointing the gun at you right now. They say he's your good friend. We were when we were in the detective division together. That was a long time ago. Now he's the head of the special investigation unit. The top of the elite. Getting ahead is the only thing he thinks about now. And that white coat of his is the symbol of his determination. His white coat? 
for somebody looking to get promoted to the top, what's the one thing they're afraid of the most? A blot on their record, of course. Like a stain on a pure white coat. Who would promote a man with a coat covered in stains? If it was me, I'd go with a black coat that didn't show any stains. The world is full of excellent candidates. Even one mistake could be the end of a career. But everybody makes mistakes, right? Nevertheless, Cabanella has chosen the path of a white coat. And he'd do anything, anything at all, to hide his coat's shadows. Like send his good friend to the gallows. Bes because that's the right thing to do. I'm a condemned criminal after all. And that's why he has that gun pointed at me right now. Is your execution really the right thing to do? I have- I had a fair trial, and that's what was decided. No problem there. But still... This is the punishment that I should receive. In order to bring a final close to that case and put it to rest forever. Lynn believes you're innocent. She's running around right now trying to prove it. Is that all you have to leave her with? No problem there? I... I was sentenced to the death penalty for killing my wife, Alma. But to me, that's not all it was for. What do you mean, that's not all it was for? I'm talking about something that happened even before this case. I stole somebody else's life. What? It was ten years ago. I'll never forget it. That day I saved the life of a little girl, and I stole away the life of a man. Ten years ago. The life of a little girl. Could that little girl be... Lynn? She told you about that? Yeah, she said you were her hero. Now just calm down and drop that weapon. S stay back! If you come any closer, I'll shoot her! Ten years ago in a certain park, a little girl was taken hostage. I was still young then. I didn't have any self-control. I remember asking myself at the time, Jowd, are you going to shoot this guy? And this is what I answered. Yeah, I'm going to shoot. My hand was shaking a little. If my hand slipped, the man might die. Even the little hostage girl was in danger. Nevertheless, that was my answer. Yeah, I'm going to shoot. And the man died. I took his life. Lynn was never told the outcome. She was so young at the time. I don't deserve to be called a hero. What I deserve is execution. Ready to go? My arms are getting tired. You got it, baby. Time for the big show of hauling you on. Oh. That's right. Just let me make one last phone call. That's a big favor to ask so casually, my old friend. Tell you what I'll do. I'll pretend I'm not watching. I'll be listening, though. On that, you can rely. Sissel, you've got your own path to follow. You better hurry. My own path? Lynn is at the Justice Minister's office right now, right? It might not be a bad idea to f say my final farewell to him, too. Hello? Everything's fine here. Is this the chicken kitchen? I'd like to request a delivery. Uh, um... The chicken kitchen's next door! Goodbye! Hmm. 
Hmm. It sounds like she's in some kind of trouble. It does, doesn't it? Go help her out, would you, Sissel? Sorry to keep you waiting, Inspector. Ready to go? Oh, before I forget... I have a little something for you. A present, if you will. There's nothing else like it, baby. If there's nothing else like it, don't throw it. What's this? A pocket watch? Considering my situation, it's the last thing in the world I need right now. Forgive me, man. Let's just say I'm no good at choosing prisons. This is it, Sissel. Let me just leave you with one thing. Don't trust other people's memories. Look for what you seek with your own eyes. I'll remember that. They're gone. There's nothing left here. No hope and no cores either. Without any cores, I can't follow after them. This is the end of my adventure. I feel pretty dejected, but I guess I'd better go find Lynn. I'll follow the path Detective Jowd pointed out to me. The path to the Justice Minister's office, where Lynn went to try and stop the execution. <laughs>